Yo, Elliot, been a while since I've been in contact with you. Things really seem to be going in the right direction for me. Unfortunately, this is changing rapidly. The government here in the Netherlands have gone full fascist. I'm not allowed to go to the gym anymore without the medicine. I am also not allowed to play any other sports without the medicine. The government has also made masks mandatory inside buildings again. They are now thinking of making the medicine mandatory for the workplace and for schools. This means that I will probably not have a job anymore soon and I won't be able to go to school. For the past several days, I have felt lost, not knowing what to do with my time that is still useful. Do you have any recommendations? So there are those who have termed this global shift in, uh, in sovereignty, in power, economically, socially. This, this, there's a, this huge change happening on the planet and you're experiencing some of the, 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 the pressure thereof as the Great Reset. And this whole idea of a Great Reset is to initiate the planet, humankind, every country into a new order, right? Some would say a new world order, a new world order, a new world order, a new way that things are going to be done. And they're using, and, they're, and this whole unfoldment of this reset is being ushered in under the guise of safety and protection against a virus, a bioweapon, right? Uh, that has a 99.9% uh, survival rate, right? It's all a farce. It's all fake. Um, but they're using it as a means to uh, instill further to totalitarian uh, practices, uh, authoritarianism. Uh, they are, th in fact, I read recently that according to the Nuremberg trials and in international law, it's completely illegal for them to be using these experimental medicines on us. So there's a shirking of the rule of law. There's just a, there's a turn away. There's a huge turning away from everything that got us to where we are because they want to take us somewhere else. And you're experiencing the pressure of this reset, this, this power grab, if you will, that the world is unfolding right before our eyes. And so, you're unable to go to school, you're unable to go to work, you're needing to follow these these mandates, right? About what you what you have to wear and what medicine you have to take, and you've decided that you're not going to do it. You are resistant. You're resisting the great reset. You're resisting the new world order. You're resisting medical martial law. And the, uh, and the totalitarian takeover of the entire world, which I think ultimately is going to fail. Now, when it fails, they will have succeeded by giving the medicine to a significant portion of the population that by doing so have pledged their allegiance to the new world order. You, on the other hand, have resisted. You're saying no. And as a result, you are going to be persecuted. I think this is something that we all have to get through our heads. I think this is something we all need to actually start becoming more and more comfortable with. The fact that persecution is being unfolded before our very eyes and that if we continue to think and behave and live and expect life to be the cushy, cozy, easy, easy button walk, world that we lived in prior to it, we're going to be very disillusioned. And this is why a lot of people just follow along with the medical martial law, global totalitarian takeover through this medical martial law. There's a lot of people that just go along with it because they want what? Things to go back to normal. This is what was promised. Things will go back to normal. Things will go back to normal. 15 days, right? <laughs> just wear the mask. Just take the medicine. Just sell your soul to Satan and things will get normal again. Well, there's no normal. There's no intention for things to get normal ever again. And so this is the great divide. This is the great split. I believe that this is the harvesting that is predicted in revelations in the Bible. This is this, this is the great separation, the wheat from the chaff, but it's not going to be easy walk. Like some Christians believe like Jesus is just going to come riding down on a cloud and he's going to take up, uh, all the, all the holy souls. 
it, do, it doesn't work that way. I believe that the tribulation comes first. And so we had all better be prepared. I'm grateful that I'm uh, very blessed, fortunate to live in the U.S. and to live in Florida at this time. But I do not take it for granted that at any time, at any day, all this can flip and I, my life could look a lot like yours. And if I put myself in your shoes, as I may be someday, I have to bite the bullet. We'll have to bite the bullet. We will have to suffer, but through our suffering comes strength. Through our suffering comes grace from God and mortification of our flesh and the strengthening of our resolve, our soul. And so more than anything, as a means of inspiration, motivation to keep going, keep resisting, uh, stay on your path uh, by choosing based on your ethical guidelines, what you will and will not take into your body, no matter how much they persecute you, is, is actually a grace from God. It's actually an opportunity to grow stronger in a way that you would never otherwise get an opportunity to, right? When you go to the gym, when you go to the gym, what are you doing? You're resisting. What is, why, do we, why do we call it resistance training? Because when you go to the gym, you apply resistance to your muscular tissue, to your body, and your body resists that resistance, res resists that weight. And it's through the resistance of that weight, struggling with that weight, that we grow stronger, right? Without any struggle, there's no strength, right? Without resisting that weight, working through resistant training, there's no strength. And so I don't want to make light of your situation. I don't want to uh, gloss over it as if it's not a big deal. It is a big deal. Uh, it's such a big deal that it relates to the state of your soul, really and truly. It, it, it relates to the state of your soul. When I say harvesting, those who pledge their allegiance to the new world order will be descending, right? You know, a lot of people in the new age like to use this word ascension, right? You're on the ascension plan, right? What is ascension? Rising up. Ascension means to rise up, right? I even think the word enlightenment means to rise up, right? Because you get lighter, right? There are going to be those that are descending. There are those that are going to be heavy with density, right? And they're the ones that choose to worship this world and its new order. But those who rise up above it, those who rise up out of it, not in an easy way, but through resistance and persecution, they save their souls. They save their souls because they recognize, and this is where religion becomes an important consideration when you start to consider the state of your soul rather than the safety of your body, you make very different choices. And that's why Christians are so threatening to the, to the global world order, to the new world order. They, 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 that's why Christianity has been under attack for the past, well, many, many years, a long time, but so, so voraciously over the past 100 years because they understood that the resistors in the West will be the Christians because, number one, we are not of this world. We're not of this world. I am concerned with the world. I, I, I live in this world, but I am from a spiritual reality, and so are you. And you, only by having a spiritual mindset, be it Christian or otherwise, but realizing that we are not of this world and that we are of a spiritual reality and that you could... Take my body, but you can never take my freedom, is what's going to set your soul free, right? This is, this is, these are words of Mahatma Gandhi, right? I think he says something to the effect of, you could beat my body, you could whip my body, you could chain my body, you could do whatever you want my body, but you absolutely cannot imprison my soul. He says something like that. And I think also Braveheart, right? Braveheart. Braveheart was a great movie, right? W William Wallace. One of the most famous lines in that movie, Mel Gibson, what a great guy. Mel Gibson says as he's playing William Wallace in Braveheart was, you could take my life, but you'll never take my freedom. Right? I remember that, man. That was the rallying call of the day. I remember how big that was. I remember shouting that myself.
after seeing that movie. It feels good when we watch it in a movie. It feels good when we're rooting for the protagonist in the movie. Uh, it doesn't feel as good when it's us, but we can take inspiration from men like William Wallace. He said no, and he suffered. Gandhi said no, and he suffered. Jesus said no, and he suffered. All of the martyrs of the early church said no, and they suffered. This is how we. This is what is expected of us, and we're and we're being called to set ourselves apart. And it will not be easy. It's not supposed to be easy. It's a grace, though, because it strengthens you. It shows you that this world cannot control you and that you owe your allegiance not to the new world order, but to God the Father. And so my opinion is that you've got to gird your, gird your loins. You've got to arm yourself with religion, spirituality, God, Christ, Christianity. Right? That's, how, that's how it worked in the West. Right? Um, but of course, we've got a whole lot of new age ideas. And I'm not saying, not saying don't go that route, but I'm saying that you've got you to choose something that helps you transcend or ascend up out of the, the density of this 3D world. You know there's multiple dimensions, right? You know there's multiple dimensions. This is not a woo-woo weird idea. This is not a strange idea that there are multiple dimensions. You know how you know that there are multiple dimensions and that we are we, we are a spectrum through them? Because there's a third dimension, right? What is 3D? And nobody would argue that we live in a 3D world. We live in a third dimensional world. But there are fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional, and you know many, many dimensional uh, ways that, that we interact, right? A, a 5D... Someone who's living with 5D consciousness, right? A higher dimension consciousness, right? Uh, is a person who's not focused on what's happening to him. He's focused on the state of his soul, right? These are people who like are imprisoned, right? I think of like, um, I think of uh, Viktor Frankl, right? Who's a Holocaust survivor, of course. You know, we always remember the Holocaust, but... Not all the other Holocausts, it's always the Jewish Holocaust. But there were some very fascinating people that came out of that and wrote some books. Um, and Viktor Frankl was one of them, right? This is, we are, in essence, going through a, another Holocaust of sorts. This is what the New World Order is, is predicated on. There needs to be a Holocaust on the planet, right? And they need, they, there's, a, there's a desire to rid the planet from a significant portion of the population, get rid of a lot of us. So there's this Holocaust going on. And if you read... Uh, Victor Frankl's book, Man's Search for Meaning, as he experienced the Jewish Holocaust, uh, the people that did well, the, the survivors, were the ones that were able to find peace in their misery. I remember there's a scene in the book where he says that he, he reached some, some sort of enlightenment, like something shifted in his consciousness one day while he was standing in line and you know they would give him like they would call it soup, but it was like hot water with like boiled potatoes in it. And so he's sitting in his line, and uh, th they dug down to the bottom of the soup, and a piece of fish bone was present with his potato in his hot water. And he just looked at that piece of fish bone with such gratitude that his entire consciousness shifted, and he was able to detach from all the bodily harm and pain that was inflicted upon him while being in that state. And he goes on to write about it afterwards when he, you know, he was released. And even if you read books like uh, Alexander Shol uh, uh, Sh Solzhenitsky, Alexander Solzhenitsky, he was a prisoner uh, in Eastern Europe, I forget what country, uh, during the Bolshevik takeover, right? The, the communist takeover of... of uh, Eastern Europe has a lot of lessons for history, a lot of lessons for how we should go continue to live our lives. In fact, I learned about Solzhenitsky from this book. This is Live Not By Lies, A Manual for Christian Dissidents by Rod Dreher. I, Christian or not, I would invite you. Now, if you read this book, you might, you might be more interested in being a Christian because he gives good reason why. But this would be a good book to read. And, and anybody who's living in the, under these mandates and who the oppression and the, uh, and the persecution is coming down very hard on, 
This is a very, 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 very good book. Live Not by Lies. And he tells he talks about the history of the lies that pervade our culture that causes these types of resets or revolutions to take fold. And it's a it's a slippery slope. So I hope that offers you solace in your in your challenging situation. I'm with you. We're all with you. This is a global takeover and we'll all experience it to some greater or lesser degree. But the bottom line is it's good to set your soul in order, live in a state of grace and read this book for tactical advice given by people who've lived, in, who've lived through it. Solzhenitsky, Solzhenitsky, if I say his name right. Uh, there's a lot of reference to him and how he was able to not only save his own soul through the persecution, but save many, 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 many other souls as a result. So I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.